Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Servants. Today we are delving into the realm of mystery and espionage. The subjects of today's video are the ever elusive Ninja of Caldea. Ninja are one of the most well known groups of assassins and spies in the world, and as such many of the more successful ones would naturally have their names carved into history. The problem with researching ninjas, however, is that they were so secretive that a lot of information that we have is limited by what was actually known of them and what they are credited for. So, in lieu of that, I have decided to also include a brief history of the ninja before getting into our subjects today. So, if you don't care about that and you just want to see our spies in the shadows, go ahead and skip ahead now. To begin, what exactly is a ninja? Well, they are hired hands who specialize in the fields of espionage, infiltration, assassination, and deception. They would often be hired for the purpose of getting into heavily fortified castles, forts, or encampments, and either gathering information such as guard rotations or discovering weaknesses within. They first appear as far back as the 12th century but came into prominence during the Sengoku period, which was around the 15th century. This is due in no small part to the fact that this was a time period where Japan was very volatile. Warring clans attempted to gain territory over one another, bandits roamed the mountains and highways attacking merchants, and we were only about a century off from Nobunaga coming in and needing the foundation that would eventually unify all of Japan, but with all of this war raging on, rival daimyos would want to get the upper hand on their enemies, thus a niche was formed. From the Iga province in the village of Koga, a group of spies for hire emerged. Nestled in the mountainsides, these villages trained young people both male and female to become weapons of war. From these areas, you would get professional ninjas, people who trained in the ways of martial arts and were able to utilize the various weapons and tricks that the ninja are so well known for today. There is such a thing as non-professional ninjas, however, which were usually made up of peasants and former samurai, and they acted more like spies. Think of them kind of like how you would do discounts or knockoffs. See, despite how they appear in pop culture, ninja were not these killing machines who mostly performed assassinations on others. Their primary role was just gathering intelligence. In reality, the portrayal of vast swaths of ninja just suddenly appearing at a fort and taking everyone out is not very common. What did happen, however, are the burnings of forts from the inside and the poisoning of food stores, which was a much better way to gimp an entire army. The whole idea behind the ninja was to fight smart, not hard. That said, they could still fight hard when push came to shove. While many assassinations by ninja are attributed to merely being rumor, as they are often romanticized or dramatized, they were still feared for being effective in what they did. In fact, for a long time it was believed that Uesugi Kenshin, also known as Nagao Kagetora, was killed by a ninja who snuck into their lavatory and when they went to sit down, thrust a spear up their anus. Modern historians believe that this was merely hearsay and that they died of stomach cancer instead, but the Shishkobop story is a better tell. Nobunaga and his posse were actually frequent targets for Ninja given his role in history. In response, he hired his own ninja to guard him. That is, until Nobunaga marched on Iga and destroyed everything, effectively ending the reign of professional ninja. Ninja do appear in the historical record after having scattered, specifically during the Shimabara Rebellion. If that sounds familiar to you, that is because it was the rebellion in which Amakusa Shira was involved. This was effectively a failed attempt by Japanese Christians to gain a foothold in Japan permanently after being subject to persecution. Ninja were hired from the Koga to infiltrate storehouses and steal poison or burn provisions. They're also credited for causing mass confusion for the Christian side by stealing banners bearing the cross and sneaking in under the guise of being on the Christian side for ultimately killing their enemies in a massive ambush. This is the last time that the ninja are mentioned as being used for war. Even without war, however, ninja were still around, being hired as specialized bodyguards for high-ranking members of society. But as they took on the more low-key positions, by the time of the Meiji Restoration in 1868, ninja were almost viewed as folklore from years past. But now let's take a look into our Chaldean ninja. We have Fuma Kotaro, Mochizuki Chiyome, and Kato Danzo. If we want to be hypercritical, you could say that Okada Izo fits into this category as well. But even if he were to be given this title, I've already covered him in a video, so go watch that after this. Let's start with Kotaro. Fuma is another name that is well known in the realm of the ninja right next to the Koga. Fuma Kotaro is actually the name of all of the leaders of the Fuma clan of ninjas. They were a group situated in the Kanagawa prefecture with ties dating all the way back to Taira no Masakado, who, if you will remember from the Tawara Tota video, is the man who Tota was hired to kill and did so after a two months long battle. We are fortunate to know which Fuma Kotaro that we have in Chaldea, being the most famous one, Fuma Kotaro the Fifth. We do not have an exact date of birth for him, but he is notorious for his leading of a band of 200 thieves and operating during the time of Oda Nobunaga. Kotaro is often associated with being somewhat of a supernatural being. This is likely because of his skill as a warrior, but also from his name meaning Wind Demon. Popular theory at the time claimed that he was the product of an Oni and a human. They served under the Hojo clan at the time and are credited for dealing a serious blow to the Takeda clan. In 1580, the Fuma clan led a coup
covert invasion into the Takeda clan and raised so much chaos that the Takeda forces began attacking each other out of fear that their comrades had joined the opposing side. Then, a decade later, the Hojo fell to Toyotoma Hideyoshi and the Fuma clan went into hiding. Kind of. They still operated, but now as bandits. Fuma Kotaro is credited for killing another famous ninja who is also labeled as his rival, Hattori Hanzo, by tracking him down through a waterway and then setting it on fire with oil. This has been disproven, however. Kotaro would eventually be caught by the Tokugawa and beheaded in 1603. Thus, the reign of Fuma Kotaro ended. I mentioned this up top, but a common problem that we have with researching and writing about these people who lived in stealth is the fact that they are more or less hidden from history. Never mind the fact that additional resources are entirely Japanese. The problem is only going to get worse for these next two. Kato Danzo was a ninja from the generation before Kotaro. He is one who's shrouded in mystery and rumor as well, but he has a bit more of a mystic twist on him. He is credited for being a sorcerer. His supposed ability to fly is where he gets his nickname, Black Kite. His other feats were his ability to swallow an entire ox, which he did in front of a crowd of people, and possibly the ability to perform illusory magic. They are given no date of birth or death, but we know the time in which that they operated because they appear in the historical record as taking up an invitation from who else but Nagao Kagetora. Impressed by Danzo's deeds, Kagetora challenged him to steal a Naginata from one of his retainer's castles. He was able to do that, but also managed to kidnap a servant girl in the process and present them both to Kagetora. Impressed, the daimyo wanted to hire them, but the retainer who he'd stolen from supposedly feared the ninja and plotted to have him killed. After catching wind of this, Danzo defected to Kagetora's rivals, the Takeda clan, who assumed that Danzo was a double agent and killed them. When this occurred exactly is unknown. What is interesting about Danzo's design and fate is that she is a Karakuri doll. These were a real type of ancient robot that were able to perform special tasks from small things like pouring tea to the ability to knock and fire arrows. They are exceptionally impressive in terms of ancient technology. Of course, Danzo's model is a step above the rest, being able to independently operate, think, and develop a personality into our knowledge dolls like this are still not real. Our final ninja is Mochizuki Chiyome. Chiyomi was historically a female ninja, and was specifically a kunoichi. These were female ninja who specialized in the art of seduction, able to lure men away from their groups to kill or interrogate them, or cause infighting amongst the group. Chiyome was the wife of a member of the Kagaryu, Mochizuki Moritoki. Her husband would be killed in battle, and Chiyome left in the care of the Takeda clan. It was a member of the Takeda clan who made the request that she begin work as a kunoichi and start a network of female spies to use against their enemies. She agreed, being from a long line of the Koga ninja, and set up in the village of Nezu. She was initially indiscriminate in her recruiting, gathering sex workers, geisha, orphans, and widows of civil wars. Chiyome trained them in the ways of the ninja, and even how to be Miko, or shrine maidens, so that they could travel more or less undetected. This continued until her troop was around 300 women strong, all trained in the arts of seduction, espionage, and disguise craft. She was incredibly successful and would relay all of her information directly to Takeda Shingen, the daimyo, until his mysterious death in 1573, where Chiyome then vanishes from history. We don't know her fate or anything after this point. As for the snake demon that is supposedly attached to her, this is attributed to her being a descendant of Koga Saburo, whose legend goes as follows. Saburo was searching for his lost wife, Kasugahime, with his two older brothers. This search led him into a cave on Mount Tateshina. The middle brother was jealous of Saburo and wanted to take Kasugahime for himself. They find Kasugahime, and as they are leaving, the middle brother traps Saburo in the cave. With no way out, Saburo begins traveling deeper within the cave and happens to wander into the realms of the unknowns. Here, he encounters a number of wondrous things, but does eventually make it back to the surface. However, he finds that he has become a massive serpent. With the help of a god disguised as a Buddhist monk, he is able to become a human once more and is reunited with Kasukahime. It is implied in fate that this transformation to a snake did leave Saburo with a lingering curse, which plagued his bloodline. The way how it is portrayed in fate makes it similar to a binding curse, though this one does not appear to kill its host because it wants to continue on through later generations. That said, that's just speculation on my part. But that is it! The Ninja of Caldea in the books. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you would like to request a servant, please let me know down in the comments. Like the videos, it really does help out the channel. Subscribe to catch these as they go up. Join the Discord, link down below. Follow my Twitch for significantly less structured content. I also have a Twitter, but for now, keep your chin up. Peace.